Hi, this video is about the convolution sum for discrete time LTI systems. So in our previous discussions, we have discussed about linear systems and time invariant systems. So linear time invariant systems are uh, such systems which can be easily characterized uh, by means of some simple mathematics. Assuming that we have a system, right? And it has a cause x of t or x of n, and then that cause and has an effect which we call as y of t. Now, if this system is an LTI system, that is linear time invariant system, and you insert an impulse function, direct delta function, or delta of n in discrete time, so at the output you would extract the impulse response that is h of t that is if the input is direct delta function impulse the output is simply an impulse response so this impulse response characterizes the system fully so if we give any other input for example e minus a t or whatever we can achieve the output by simply using h of t and convolving it with e minus a t right so this is an operation uh, the convolution that we would look into in the forthcoming uh, session of this video if the input is delta of t the output is impulse response if you give any arbitrary input you can get the output simply from the impulse response now the lta systems can be categorized into discrete time and continuous time so this example is of continuous time so in discrete time we have something which we call as the convolution sum and in continuous time we have the convolution integral so in this video we would be looking into the convolution sum and build the intuition of convolution sum over here and later on we would look into the convolution integral so consider this discrete time signal x of n where we have values at integer points 1 2 3 minus 1 minus 2 and minus 3 and so on it's going to plus infinity and minus infinity so we can extract this specific value over here right and the way to do it is simply multiply x at time instant 0 with a delta function delta of n so this means that we have multiplied this signal with an impulse which is stationed at zero and we have an impulse delta of n right so if delta of n multiplies with this function eventually we will have just the center value because this is available only on time zero similarly for the second case we have this value appearing over here and this is simply x of one but x of one is again extracted by means of a delta function right or an impulse function so this is delta of n minus 1 delta of n minus 1 means that again we have a shifted impulse rather than having an impulse over here now we are having an impulse at 1 so this is delta of n minus 1 so if we multiply this function with this function we would have this function and similarly over here we would have x of minus 1 delta of n plus 1 so what we have done over here is we have expressed this single input or x of n which is a discrete time signal into a sum of shifted impulses so therefore we can write x of n as a sum of shifted impulses so sum of some x with some argument and then impulse delta with some argument do all of this summation so if we sum all of them together we eventually reach here so we have the summation starting from minus infinity from this end going to that end which is plus infinity x of k delta of n minus k right so we have transformed the discrete time signal into a sum of shifted impulses and this is something that we call as sifting property so in this sifting property if you analyze this further these 
this is nothing but impulse or shifted impulses and these are some constant values or weights right so they are giving the strength to this signal x of n is giving us the amplitude of the signal so whatever the amplitude was over here so this amplitude is again repeated over here and so on for all of the values so we can again call x of n as sum of weighted shifted impulses now let us pass this input through a system which is linear so the linear system says that sum of inputs or sum of weighted inputs leads to sum of weighted outputs right so x of n would change to y of n right so sum of input should lead to sum of output so this would again convert to a summation x of k is simply a weight which is giving the amplitude so again it would be repeated over here so when the impulse would pass through a linear system so we would have a response and that response can be referred to as h shifted uh, by the impulse is shifted by k right so we can write k in the subscript and then we would have an n so this is the response of impulse uh, of a linear system now again consider that we pass this through a linear and time invariant system what should be the output so if the system is linear and time invariant x of n would convert to y of n from linearity summation or sum of input leads to sum of output so again we would have a k from minus infinity to infinity x of k again from linearity or from the homogeneity property that if you multiply a constant value at the input so that constant value goes to the output as well so we would have x of k but for the impulse response say we have an impulse delta of n and we pass it through a system so at the output we are getting h of n but if the system is time invariant so this means that if we shift this input in time n say minus k it is a shifted impulse by k unit and if we pass it through a system if the system is time invariant so this means that this output or the impulse response would be shifted as per the input that is n minus k so this is from time invariance hence we can write this as h of n minus k we got rid of this subscript now this is a well known and a very important expression that we call as a convolution sum and a shorthand notation for this is simply y of n is equal to input x of n convolve with h of n where this is simply the steric is simply uh, defining that this is a convolution operator so let us look into one example and understand the convolution further initially i have rewritten the expressions that is the output y of n is dependent on the input x of n steric that is the convolution symbol and the impulse response so mathematically this is x of k h of n minus k and the summation is from minus infinity to infinity so let us look into one example say we have an input x of n which has a value of 0.5 and 2 at 0 and 1 respectively and similarly we have an impulse response h of n which has a value of 1 at 0 1 and 2 right so as a first step what we are going to do is we need x of k rather than x of n so we can just simply change the x's from n to k and from here we reach here and we are done with the first part but in the second part the signal which we are going to flip that is the impulse response so we can change this from h of n to h of k right and this would change to k and but we need the flipped version minus k of it right so we can flip it 
so we would have 0 minus 1 minus 2 and the values would be 1 so now this is k h of minus k but we're going to add an end to it right and this is done over here from here to here that is initially we had 0 so if we add n here so this will become n this would become n minus 1 from here and this would simply be n minus 2 and this curve is h of n minus k which is over here so we have x of k and the flipped version of the impulse response uh, added with an index n so this n would assist us to move uh, from left to right right so initially over here what i have said is that this value of n is less than zero so it is less than zero so if it is less than zero x of k and h of n minus k that is this signal and this signal are not overlapping if they are not overlapping the overall product terms would be zero so whenever we have a value of h of n minus k we don't have a value of x of k but when we have a value of x of k we don't have a value of h of n minus k so overall product is zero note that we are looking at the product here and then that product is being summed right so next we shift n towards right and specifically we set the value of n equal to zero right so if we set the uh, value of n equal to zero so this means that now this plot over here uh, x of k specifically x of 0 is overlapping with this value so this means that this summation would only hold for this specific value that is x of 0 which is 0 0.5 times h of 0 over here so that is h of 0 this is 0 0.5 into the value of h of 0 is 1 over here right so we are getting 0 0.5 similarly if we set n equal to 1 now these two values are overlapping with these two values right and hence we would have uh, 0 0.5 into 1 plus 2 into 1 so 0 0.5 into 1 so 0 0.5 plus 2 this is equivalent to 2.5 right next if n is set to 2 this is n and we are setting it to 2 now these two values are overlapping with these two values and again you have 2.5 at the outcome furthermore if we set n equal to 3 now the tail of this function that is this value when your n is equal to 3 so this value is overlapping with this value right so 2 into 1 so the outcome is 2 so beyond this 1 uh, if it moves further towards right that is if n is equal to 4 or greater than 4 so the function x of n minus k would not be overlapping with x of k and hence if there is no overlap again the outcome is 0 so what we have done is we have kept this we have flipped the impulse response and moved from left to right so as we have moved from left to right uh, we got different values of the output y of n so in short we have an output y of n where the first value is 0 0.5 which is coming from here at time instant 0 the next value is 2.5 which is coming from here at time instant 1 and again we have 2.5 at time instant 2 so these two values are 2.5 next we have a value of 2 at 3 and then we have zeros onward to just do a cross check let us do this same uh, example by using another method that is the tabular method so for the same example uh, now we are going to get results using a tabular method so on this axis say we have x of n and at time instant 0 we have 0 0.5 as per uh, the expressions given before and we have 2 at time instant 1 similarly at time instant 0 for h of n which is expressed over here 
the values are simply 1 at time 0, 1 at 1 and 1 at 2. So x of n versus h of n. So we are going to cross multiply this value with all of these values. So we'll get 0.5 each. And similarly, 2 with all of these values. So we will get 2. So next, if we make cross diagonals and then add the cross diagonals, so we'll get an output y of n, which would be equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and this is at time instant 0 when n is equal to 0. And next, 2 plus 0.5, so we would have. 2.5 again 2 plus 0.5 so we would have 2.5 and 2 and rest of the values would be 0. This is exactly the same result as we have obtained uh, using the standard method of uh, convolution. But note that this tabular method has some uh, limitations and these limitations are that if either h of n or x of n is you know going from a certain value to infinity right so you would not be able to do any kind of analysis it is better to adopt the formal method that we have done previously